Hello, how are my beautiful viewers out there today? One day closer to the weekend, I must say I'm looking forward to it. Don't really have anything planned, but I always look forward to the weekend, ladies and gentlemen. And today, it might as well be the weekend with this crazy ass story I'm bringing your way. I can't even picture this shit happening, and I gotta hear y'all's input on it. But before we get into these crazy stories, do not forget to smash that like, subscribe, notification bell. Set it to all, we talk about all things prison and crime related. Now let me go ahead and bring the first unbelievably insane story your way. And in order to get an unbelievably insane story, we have to travel down south to Florida. God dang, Florida has something crazy coming out of it every single day. A man who law enforcement officials say was attempting to break into a house died. How did this guy die? I'll give you a couple seconds to think of a couple of uh, scenarios. Lace the comment section. How do you think this individual died going into a house? Was he shot by someone living in the house? Did he pass away from maybe natural causes of some sort? Heart attack? Overdose? Did the police show up and there was a standoff? Confrontation? No, none of that stuff happened. None of that stuff happened, ladies and gentlemen. And if you left a comment down below, let me know what you think happened. You're absolutely wrong. You ain't never gonna believe this shit. Officials say he was attempting to break into a house and then died when a window he was using to enter the home fell on him, pinning him and strangling him. A window. A window, ladies and gentlemen. How the hell... Does a window pin you down to the point where you can't move and it strangles you? I just don't get this. Is this some kind of like medieval window in a castle or something? I don't understand how this could even happen. The Lee County Sheriff's Office confirmed that Jonathan Hernandez, 32, died Saturday as he was attempting to climb through a window of a home in Lee Acres, east of Fort Myers. Lee Acres, ladies and gentlemen, any of y'all know that place? Or neighborhood? Do they have massive ass windows? Is there any windows out there in that neighborhood that might look medieval or way over 200 pounds? I don't know. I even Googled the neighborhood to try to see if I could find like some exotic houses that might have some extremely heavy windows. I didn't see shit. But then again, this is Florida. Florida got a lot of different kind of houses. Some are extremely exotic, some aren't. You might have one neighbor that's got a badass house, jacuzzi, pool, uh, you know, cage dance, so you no know, crocodiles come in. Then you got another guy right next door neighbor. He might have one of the Walmart pools with a couple gators in it. <laughs> oh, it's a wide variety of housing out there in Florida, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta be careful too with the uh, Airbnb, VRBO shit. You could get a badass, nice house, but that thing could be in the projects. But this is a crazy story, and it really makes no sense to me. A photo provided by Fort Myers News Press, part of the USA Today network by the home's property manager, shows a person caught in a window with a green frame about five feet off the ground. The window is closed on his neck, and the man's right arm hangs at his side. His body was limp. The Sheriff's Major Crimes Unit has taken over the investigation to his death. The Lee County Jail shows numerous arrests for Hernandez, also known as Jonathan Hernandez Zulaga. You know, this is how I'm looking at this story, right? Either it was a very heavy window and it slid down, landed on his neck in a, in a way to where, uh, you know, knocked him unconscious and he just kind of stop breathing because the thing was sitting on his neck or someone could have been in the house slammed that shit on his neck and just held it there you know we don't know they're doing an investigation on it but from what i have read and seen there ain't nothing uh pertaining to foul play in this situation it looks like it was just a freak final destination type of burglary next ladies and gentlemen we're traveling from all the way down south to all the way up north to maine Lemington, Maine, to be exact. Bruce Akers of Lemington will spend 38 years in prison for killing his neighbor with a machete. 38 years in prison is nothing for murdering someone with a machete. This dude got blessed. I just got done reading a story. I was going to bring it to you. Maybe I'll bring it to you tomorrow or something. Well, I'm bringing it to you now, I guess. 
Guy was uh, exonerated from prison after, what, 40-something years for a life sentence for selling $20 of weed to an undercover cop. Just because it was habitual. It was his third time selling to an undercover cop, I believe. Uh, Petty-ass drugs like weed, they sentenced him to life for a $20 bag of weed. He's free now after 40-something years, but this guy's getting 38 years for killing his neighbor with a machete. The medical examiner found a cause of death to be blunt force and sharp injuries for more than a dozen strikes to the neck and head, causing partial decapitation. This guy knew in his mind he wanted to take that man's life. You don't hit nobody in the neck or head with a machete unless you know you're trying to take that man's life. Or you're just batshit crazy like this guy's claiming. Aker's defense argued Monday that he battled mental health issues and was in an abnormal state of mind at the time of the murder. Bruce Akers reached for the machete in his trailer. Whatever the final blow was delivered, he took that machete and he hit Douglas Flint in a minimum of 13 to 16 times across the head, neck area with the machete. The state had requested a 45 years while the defense was asking for 25 and the judge kind of went in the mids, which is 38. You know, that's usually what the judge does. Whatever the defense is trying to get and the district attorney's trying to get, district attorney's the one who's against the victim, trying to get you sent to prison, the judge usually goes in the middle. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed those two stories today. They are absolutely unbelievable, ain't they? Do not forget to hit the like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave. That like button is free. Don't let me remind you now. Don't forget to check out all the links in the description of the video. Hit that more button right underneath the video and description comes right out. Click that link that says merchandise. Go buy yourself some lockdown merch. Support the channel. Look out for the cookout. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, I salute to every last one of you who've been supporting me since the beginning. And everybody who's just now joining the lockdown compound. Y'all be easy, be safe, and stay free.